Hi everyone, just take two here. I'm gonna add a different account this time for Fertilily. Um, so for those who were just joining, um, please do join again. Hopefully, let's see. Okay, let's try this one. Are you there? Just said it's waiting for Fertilily UK. Apparently people couldn't hear you when you were talking to me before. So let's see. I don't know why it's taking. Hi everyone. Hi, thank you for joining. I don't know why it's taking a while to load. Bear with us. In the meantime, whilst people are joining, have you got any questions for Robert? Because I will um, just make a note of them now to ask him when he's able to join. Um, okay, let's see. Just waiting for Fert and Lily to join and then I can add them. Let's see, here we go. Okay, hopefully this will work. <laughs> As I mentioned, if you have any questions, please just fire them across as we're talking um, and Robert can ask them for you. We've got lots to talk about tonight, so hopefully this is gonna work. I can hear you. Can everyone else hear Robert? He's just joined, but for some reason there's no video, so I'm not too sure why. If there's no video, it's not a problem. People can just look at me, sorry about that, but they need to hear you. So can everyone hear you? Would someone mind just messaging just to say whether they can hear Robert or just me? Okay. Have you got wi Have you got good Wi-Fi where you are? Same. Okay. So people are saying they can't hear you, Robert. The Wi-Fi is perfect with me in London. Yeah, just me. Sorry. <laughs> Whilst we're waiting for him to join, if you're trying to conceive naturally, and um, once we've talked about this conception cup, you're interested in the product, then. Um, Our readers, um, 20 of them, uh, one for free. So all you have to do is go to fertilityhelphub.com to um, it be in with a chance of winning. Just enter your email address and then we can contact the winners at the end. Um, it ends on the 13th of April, so make sure to enter. Hi, everyone who's joining. We're just having some real connection issues at the moment. Um, trying to get Robert in now and it's not connecting. I think his Wi-Fi might be a bit choppy, so just waiting for him to join. If he's not able to join, then um, let's see. <laughs> Robert, are you there? The problem is we can't see you and also people can't hear you. It just says connecting. Maybe it's because so many people are on Instagram at the moment, I don't know. I can hear you, but no one else can, that's the problem. Um, so the things that we're due to cover today are why Robert um, started and invented the product, Fertilily. Why fertility? Why did he get into fertility? Um, talking a bit about, there we go. Okay, I think yep. you're about to arrive. Right. There, hi. We're, we're going to go somewhere completely different, change of plans sorry. going through the house. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, sorry to everyone who um, has been waiting for this. Um, we now have Robert yeah. on the line, but it is a bit choppy. So hopefully you'll find um, an area where you can, people can hear you and you've got good internet. Exactly. Yeah. Hi, okay, everyone. I can see the image moving. <laughs> okay, good. So um, welcome, Robert. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, and Thank you. Let's start. If you could please introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about your background, why fertility, and what you've invented. Yeah, pleasure. Um, so I'm uh, my, my background is actually I'm a biochemist. So I studied at King's College in London way back in the day, uh, but got into science uh, quite early on. I was always very interested, and then got into developing medical products from that, um, focusing a lot on dermatological products. Um, and then some time ago, my wife and I were actually trying to conceive. Uh, we're there for two and a half years in our TTC mm -hmm. journey, which was extremely frustrating. Um, and at some point, I just said, once we did finally become pregnant and our son, Philip, was born in November 2017. So we finally managed to make it happen. Um, I said after that, I really want to develop something to help others, um, but keep it out of the uh, the kind of professional sphere and uh, the invasiveness of some of the treatments that we had. So that's where it came from. Yeah. Great. And so you had been to um, see clinics or a clinic had you in that two and a half years that you were trying to conceive beforehand? Yeah. So we tried um, in the beginning, of course, naturally for a year. 
the way that uh, obviously you're supposed to and the doctors ask you then. So that was quite frustrating on its own. Um, and then we started seeing, um, you know, women's health clinics. Uh, my wife started taking hormones and we actually went into the IUI uh, cycles and then at some point went on holiday and then managed to conceive naturally. So we got lucky there, but we did go through all that, uh, that process. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm so glad that it worked out in the end. Um, but yeah, really interested to hear more about the product. As is everyone else, I'm sure, who's joining. So thank you. Hi to everyone who's joining. Also, please chip in with any questions if you have any for Robert. He's more than happy to answer them. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the stats on fertility and fertility struggles and infertility. I mean, the last time I checked, I think it is it, am I right in saying one in seven couples um, struggle? Hi to everyone joining. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's tough to say, you know, when, when are you really struggling as a couple? Um, I think, yeah, one in six, one in seven is, is correct if you're looking at going into fertility treatments. Um, but we do know that a lot more people are actually having trouble conceiving. Um, you know, the normal person, when you start asking them after three months, they'll say, yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble conceiving, or at least it's getting frustrating for me. Um, yeah. So then, of course, the statistics are much higher. Um, and we just see that it's taking a lot longer uh, for people to conceive nowadays than it used to back in the day. Um, and that's partially because, you know, we're, we're waiting uh, till later in our lives to conceive, um, which uh, comes at a cost for male and female fertility. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of stress involved in trying to conceive nowadays. So um, I would say, yeah, there's uh, one in six actually has a problem. Um, but when uh, when you look at, you know, uh, who's uh, who's uh, trying to conceive and, and not managing to, I think the percentages yeah. are higher. Sure. So we just had a question come in. Um, so she's, Abby's very sensitive to hormones, natural and synthetic. Is there anything we can do naturally to help without doing treatments? So I think we're about to come on to that shortly yeah. with your product, aren't we? Um, yeah. Just going back to what you were saying, um, it is such a stressful time because when you start to conceive, the majority of people, I'm sure you'd agree with me and those watching, um, it's really exciting because you think yeah. this might happen straight away and then the months tick on and it just gets harder and harder. Um, and so to have something that can help you naturally is, a, is an amazing thing before, you know, leaping into fertility treatment, which as lots of people watching and as I know personally is very, very daunting. Um, yeah. Hi to everyone joining. Um, so uh, tell us a bit more about your product and Fertilily and um, how does it work? Absolutely. Um, so I was just trying to put my camera down just now because obviously I'm holding it in my hand now, but um, yeah. bear with me. Um, so this is the Fertility Conception Cup. Um, this is our packaging. This is actually our yeah. German packaging here. Um, so we're in the market now in 22 different countries. Um, and we developed this product, which is a soft silicone cup. Um, this is what I'm going to have to get a little tricky. So I had it all laid out upstairs. Just bear with me for one second. Now I have to open one. <laughs> yeah, so this is the, the Fertility Conception Cup. Um, and as you can see, I mean, it's a very soft, flexible cup. Um, and the way it actually works is you, you use it after intercourse. So the beauty of this product is you can still have intercourse. And that's, um, you know, some of the downsides of some of the other products out there that they get in the way of the romance and they get in the way of the intimacy. And we wanted like to stay that. away from that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what, what we developed is a product that you can use after sex. Um, so this is something that um, you, you get the cup and actually once you first receive it, uh, we advise to boil it out because that's also the way to keep it clean. So the first mm -hmm. time it's good to uh, boil it out in water. So it's like a baby pacifier. You can boil it and sterilize it. Um, and so what you do is advise to practice with it also because, you know, once, <laughs> once you're there, it gets a little clumsy. And so yeah. it's good to know how you actually need to use it. Um, but what you do is you take this cup and you flip it inside out in a kind of umbrella shape. Okay. And that makes the insertion much easier um, mm -hmm. because you can also fold it or something like that. But flipping it inside out, all you have to do is then uh, put a finger inside the cup and after sex, so after the male is ejaculated, or you can also use it actually with uh, insemination. So once the sperm is inside, you push it in afterwards. And then once you reach the top, you, you get a little bit of resistance and you, that's when you know where you're at the cervix. And then you pull at the stem and it flips actually back. 
and then the cervix sits inside uh, the the cup with the sperm inside of it, um, and it stays there for 20 to 60 minutes. And the cool thing with this is actually after that, you get up, you go to the restroom, you walk around, you go watch Netflix, whatever, uh, and the sperm stays inside. So you don't sit there, throw your legs in the air for 20 minutes. You actually get to walk around uh, or do whatever you want. You yeah, we actually had. Yeah, we had a um, a testimonial, someone that just wrote back to us three days ago, and I'm actually allowed to use the testimonial she agreed, uh, Leontine, and she was doing boot camp with this inside, and she said, uh, it's actually great, everything stayed inside, I love this product, and I hope to be pregnant soon, so yeah, those, those are the kind of things we're getting back now, it's, uh, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And so yeah, then... So after 20 to 60 minutes, um, you know, after 20 minutes, most of the effect is there. After 60 minutes, it doesn't make any sense really to leave it there anymore because the sperm really swims in in that time. And then you can pull it out. You can use this little cord, uh, which is usually still uh, outside of the vaginal opening, yeah. um, to pull it out. Um, and then you see these little indents. Yeah. And those indents, we actually designed them so that when the bottom of the cup is just almost outside, what you can do is you pinch these stems and it folds up the cup still on the inside. So that makes yeah. the cup much smaller to actually pull out because that's usually the most uncomfortable part. So it's this little thing of engineering that once it's still inside, you can just squeeze that and the cup actually folds up inside and comes out. So mm -hmm. that's that was what I was going to ask you, actually. Can you feel it when it's inside and does it hurt? Um, it doesn't hurt. Um, so we, we have a lot of customer feedbacks. We also have uh, usability and clinical studies where, where we did this. Um, the, the number I have in my head, so 95% of the people uh, found it not uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, some people also find wearing a tampon uncomfortable. So it, yeah. it does depend per person. We had nobody that felt pain while wearing it, um, but some people actually feel it. Um, but most people don't feel it at all and they walk around. Some people actually completely forget they're wearing it and then they call me saying, oh, I forgot to take it out. Is this a problem? Yeah. It's actually not because it's 30 day implantable medical silicone. So if you should forget about it one time, it's not an issue. Um, but again, it's so okay. comfortable that some people fall asleep and just don't realize. So oh, wow. that's, okay. that's why it's actually this, this very, very soft material that you barely feel that. Yeah. Okay. So someone has just asked, and actually I know that you've asked me this before mm -hmm. in messages, um, you don't ship to the US yet. Um, lots of people are really excited about the product in the US. No. What are your plans with that market? Yeah, I mean, right now we're focusing on the European market. It's got to do a little with the uh, with the uh, registrations that you do. Europe is uh, one market, so we, we do a registration here. We're actually working on the FDA registration also, um, so we do hope to come there soon. Um, but we're obviously not a massive conglomerate that can do all these things at the same time. Um, so the situation now, it looks like we might be there within a year, uh, roughly. But it's uh, yeah, you have to do the FDA registration on top, which is unfortunately one not one open market. Um, yeah. So it takes some time, yeah. So sure. we're, we're thinking within a year. But we do have some people that, you know, purchase the product here or get it from their friends. Uh, we're yeah. just not allowed to sell there until we have the, the FDA registration also. And we're running a competition at the moment through Fertility Help Hub yeah. for 20 of our readers to win it. So um, yeah. that's a great opportunity that, that um, got announced today. Just go to my website and you'll find it there. Um, so let's talk a bit more about the product. Is it one yeah. size fits all? It is, yeah. Um, we get that question a lot because the product uh, looks a lot like a menstrual cup. Um, mm -hmm. So we have these menstrual cups that are being mu used much more uh, nowadays from an ecological point of view, and some people very much like using them. Um, and they come in very many different sizes. Um, mm -hmm. And so you'll have the different brands that fit differently, and, and everybody has their personal favorite. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the difference is that the, uh, the menstrual cup has to sit inside the vaginal canal. Um, and the vaginal canal has, uh, you know, depending on whether you've given childbirth, depending on your size, is, is very different. Okay. Um, and it has to sit there comfortably and not have any leakage and, you know, during the entire day be there. The difference with this cup is it's actually the only time it actually fits through the, through the vagina is when it's pushing the sperm up. Um, and there, obviously, we used um, the, the, the average sizes to make sure that, you know, everybody can use it. But because it's used to push something through the vagina towards the cervix, <clears throat> it's much less um, uh, critical for the size. So it is one size fits all. Um, we haven't had any uh, people that say, look, I can't use it. It's too big or too small. So, so far, that's going very well. 
Uh, and we've sold, you know, tens of thousands of these and they've been used. And so, so far, the statistics are in our favor that, that one size is okay. And if we do see that it's not, then, you know, we'll, we'll look into developing more, but okay. so far, so good. Yeah. Okay. I think some more people have just joined us. So hi, thanks for joining tonight. Hey. Um, some, someone's just written, um, it froze when you were talking about um, something. I think that it may have been when you were talking about how to use it. Is that right? Would you mind um, whoever just commented that just saying <coughs> uh when it did freeze if you wouldn't mind rob just recapping yep. briefly for those who have joined how it works and also how it can be cleaned yeah sure so again the mm -hmm. the very easy uh, the very short explanation is this is the cup uh, this is the way you get it um you use it but so first you uh, wash it and you boil it out to get used to that mm -hmm. what you then do is you take the cup um and it actually comes with a cotton bag um, which is upstairs by the computer, okay. <laughs> but it comes in a cotton bag uh, where you can keep the product in so you can keep it on your nightstand. So you take the product, um, have it on the nightstand next to where you're going to have sex. Um, then afterwards, when he's finished or when the sperm is inside, you take the cup and you flip it inside out. You can even do it with one hand, as you see, while you're holding the phone on the other. <laughs> yeah. And um, you put the finger inside the cup and you can just insert a vagina like that push it towards the top where you feel resistance by the cervix. And then you can use one finger to hold the cup in place a little bit. And with the other hand, you pull on the stem and it flips mm -hmm. back. And then the sperm is uh, safeguarded by the cervix and has time to swim in um, while you keep it there for 20 to 60 minutes. Then you remove and, it. And importantly, as you said, you can carry on with your normal life, get up, move around, go to the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing also, um, this cup, once you remove it, you rinse it out with water. Um, yeah. we, we recommend just rinse it out with warm water while you're mm -hmm. in the, your fertile days of your cycle. Um, so, you know, most women have five or six fertile days in their cycle. Um, you know, some people recommend every day intercourse, others every second day. But, you know, while you're in your fertile days, just rinse it off and keep it clean. And then in between, boil it out for five minutes in a big pot of uh, uh, boiling water and then put it back in the cotton bag and keep it clean there. And you okay. can use it for up to six months, actually. Great. OK. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, someone just asked how many times can it be used um, up to six months and then you'd yeah. suggest getting a new one. Um, Someone else had just asked, um, let me just see who it was, Wendy, uh, is this only useful if there's a male fertility problem? Um, no, because um, a lot of times you actually don't know. So there's, there's a few times when I can tell you it's definitely not use, useful. Um, if you're not ovulating, it's not going to help. Um, there needs to be an egg that gets fertilized. Um, but as long as you're ovulating, and a lot of times you don't know, uh, it can have an added benefit. Uh, so definitely if there's a low or slow sperm count, yeah. Um, using a, a, a cervical cup like this can increase the amount of sperm that swims in by 300%. So triple wow. the amount of sperm that gets there. Um, just by inserting this after sex, leaving it there for 20 to 60 minutes, and then uh, going about your business. Um, so you can imagine if you have low or slow sperm counts, that can then triple your chances in that situation. Yeah. Absolutely. However, uh, what can also be a problem is um, uh, an abnormal pH. So you wouldn't know if your vaginal pH is abnormal. Uh, if you have a little bit of a, um, you know, hostile bacteria, it doesn't have to be a bacterial vaginosis, but something that's just off. And then what this cup does is it pushes all the sperm to where it needs to be, and it safeguards it there from the hostile uh, vaginal environment. So it just assures that more sperm gets there. Okay. And the other thing is... Also, um, a lot of times we don't know why you're not getting pregnant. I mean, if you're ovulating and there is an egg, um, you know, if a sperm gets into the egg, a lot of times then, you know, it'll get fertilized, uh, fertilized and then you'll be pregnant. Um, this just increases the amount of sperm that gets there. So every time it just increases your chances. So um, it definitely helps if there's a sperm problem, but it just increases your chances no matter you know, whether you have a fertility problem or not. Um, and, you know, as long as, it's, as, long as you're ovulating, it'll, uh, it'll increase your chances. Okay, great. Um, someone's also asked, what is it made of? Okay. Um, it's made of 30-day um, implantable medical silicone. Um, that's a certain, you know, high-grade silicone that's, uh, that, that's uh, used in medical terms. Um, but that just means that I could take this and implant it into the body. That's the kind of uh, high-grade medical silicone that we use. Um, and we actually manufacture this in a facility in Switzerland, which is a, it's like a near clean room um, facility in Switzerland that's 100% automatic. So it's not made in China. It's made uh, in a very high quality place um, made of medical silicone. Yeah. 
So do, does anyone need to be cautious of allergies or anything like that? No, um, unlike latex, silicone is very uh, hypoallergenic. Um, there are very rare cases of silicone allergy, um, but no, it's, it's very, very, very unlikely. Um, so whereas latex could be something that causes allergy, this is not something that could usually cause an allergy. Great. And um, I know it's a relatively new product, um, mm -hmm. and I guess it would be really good to know what the kind of clinical studies are to prove its, its worth and yep. the evidence to show that it helps. Yeah, definitely. So like I said, um, the, the, the biggest importance that, that we found is this uh, increase in the amount of sperm cells that swims uh, into the cervical mucus. Um, so that's where it's been shown that the, uh, the amount of sperm that swims in by using a cup like this is a uh, triple of when you wouldn't use the cup. Mm -hmm. um, the other very important thing is that we've done a lot of studies with a lot of couples uh, in a home setting to make sure that they can actually use it and that it's comfortable to use. Um, so there's, uh, there's a lot of clinical studies showing um, the way that it's used that couples are actually able to get the sperm cells up there. Um, so it started very much with this uh, clinical finding out if enough sperm swims into the cervical mucus, um, and then obviously the, the using tests. Um, and the other thing that's, that's also known, so, so if you look at the clinical data, um, when you, when you look at couples that have uh, a good penetration of the cervical mucus, um, there are actually... Um, uh, uh, there are 10 times, sorry, I'm just looking at the statistics, but um, if you have a good uh, cervical mucus penetration, you have mm -hmm. about a 30% chance of conceiving in the same time that a bad penetration would have 3% chance okay. of conceiving. So it's a huge increase of uh, chance uh, once you have a good cervical mucus penetration of the sperm. So those are the kind of uh, studies that we've had to do and, and show uh, to get the medical device also registered in, uh, in Europe uh, to be able to market it. Um, yeah, that's uh, the background. Great. Another question. Um, would this be suitable or help with a folded uterus? Um, a folded uterus is, um, well, I mean, when I, I think that's, um, I'm just double checking. A folded uterus is not when you have the, the different uh, place of the cervix, is it? A folded uterus? Um, whoever asked the question, would you mind just um, giving us a little bit more information about what, yeah. what your situation is and then it might help Robert answer um, how this hopefully um, could, could help. Um, one, of, one of the things that, that is very uh, regular, so it happens a lot, is when, when your cervix is in an abnormal place. So normally the cervix right. faces a little bit to the front and there's a lot of times when the cervix is a little bit facing towards the back. So it's, uh, okay. I don't know the English term exactly, but it's an uh, abnormal positioning of the cervix. And that's actually where this, uh, the fertility can help a lot because that's a cervix that, unlike uh, the normal one, would dip down during, uh, during an orgasm, would dip into the sperm, and then actually help the sperm come through. In this case, that wouldn't happen as much. So pushing the sperm up there in a cup would help uh, a lot, actually, in that situation. Right. Okay, so it's, it's the uterus tilting backwards. Yeah, exactly. So the, if in, in that situation, it would definitely help because we're pushing the sperm much more up there. Um, <clears throat> so you actually get more volume there and make sure that the, the cervix has uh, more chance to dip into the uh, pool of sperm cells and have something okay. swimming. Yeah. Great. And what about if you have bad cervical mucus, someone has just asked? Yeah. Um, so again, same situation. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a very uh, big difference in, uh, from person to person on, in, say, the quality of cervical mucus. So for those of you that don't know about this, um, within the uh, hormonal cycle, so within the menstrual cycle, the cervical mucus changes. Um, yeah. In the very fertile days, it's actually very elastic. It's uh, quite see-through, so it's really like um, the, the egg white, uh, raw egg white. Yeah. Um, and in the less fertile days, it's more tacky, so, so, so less elastic and more white. <clears throat> Some people have uh, cervical mucus that for six or seven days is really this fertile, uh, beautiful, uh, fertile mucus, and other people only have that fertile window for one day. Um, all the more reasons, so when, when you get more sperm towards that, when the cervical mucus is good, um, it's you know, all the more reason to use a product to get more sperm uh, into, uh, in, uh, towards the cervix when you need it. So that's point one. Point two is um, when, when the sperm is actually up there, you actually have much more, um, much more liquid, which allows the mucus also a lot more time to interact with the sperm. So if you have a bad quality cervical mucus, it would give you more time to actually allow the sperm to swim in because you're holding it there uh, for much longer time. Um, so yeah, in that case also, I would, uh, I would say definitely a good time to be using something like this. Yeah. 
Brilliant, brilliant. Um, someone's just asked what the price is, please. Yeah, so the price is £29.95. Um, it depends per retailer in the UK. So I believe Boots is retailing at £29.95, but you know, it differs uh, in, in these days. Sometimes it's £32.95 yeah. around that time. Yeah. Okay, but um, just to let you know, um, Robert is kindly giving um, our Fertility Help Hub readers uh, 20 of you um, the, the, well, the Fertility Cup. Uh, for free as a giveaway over Easter. So just go to <laughs> fertilityhelphub.com to enter. Um, and also you're kindly offering um, our Fertility Help Hub readers 25% off the product too. So there yeah. is, that's good news for everyone. Yeah, so um, together with our, our distributors in the UK is uh, Ardo Medical. Um, they're, they're doing very well for us uh, there. So uh, they've, they've also offered to help with this. So I can't take all the credit myself. Ardo uh, definitely uh, is, is helping in this situation for the UK. Yeah. Um, and they're also offering the, the product uh, on, on their website at this time um, because we do hear some problems with boots once in a while in this corona time that people are waiting for four or five hours uh, on a digital yeah. queue. So should yeah. you not get through with boots, um, you can also get it at the Ardo shop. Great, great. Um, there's also a question here. Would you mind answering mm -hmm. that one, Robert? Can you see it? It's about a septum going into two cervixes. Um, I cannot. I need to scroll down just a second. Uh, it's a bit of a medical one. Yeah, oops. And if anyone else got any questions in the meantime, please just um, type them in. Ooh, um... No, I can't answer that question because, again, I'm uh, I'm a biochemist, not a gynecologist. Um, or if, so, there's there's some medical questions that I need to also watch out with because uh, obviously I'm not a medical doctor, and so this one doesn't ring a bell. So, unfortunately, I can't help you. But if you want to send us an email to uh, support at fertility.com, I'd be more than happy to pick it up with our gynecologist. We do have an in-house gynecologist, right. um, but. Not comfortable answering that like this because uh, again. Right. Okay. Thank you for uh, yeah reading that one. No back. worries. Um, and also, so someone has just asked. Um, they live in California. Um, yeah, I'm afraid we just talked about that. Hoping to have the yep. product available in the US within the year. Um, Fertility Help Hub is running a competition with twenty to give away at the moment. Um, unless you have a connection in the UK or somewhere else in Europe. Rob, would you mind just yeah. telling everyone which countries it's. Um, Available in sure. Moment. Yeah, mainly uh, mainly Europe for the moment. So we are in Sweden, Norway, Denmark, uh, Finland, Iceland, uh, obviously across the UK. So uh, mm -hmm. also in uh, in Ireland and Scotland. Um, then we're also in France, Spain, the Netherlands, um, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, um, and we are just now launching in Vietnam. Uh, we're just delivering to them. Uh, and we're starting in several Middle East countries and Israel. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Great. Yeah. And so, will you be attending quickly. ASCAP in October if uh, if events are taking place then? A pardon? Will I? Will you be going to America to attend the ASRM um, annual event? It's not planned yet. No. Um, I think when uh, yeah when when we plan the launch, we'll be going going over there for more fairs and events. Um, but again, right now we're working mainly on the registration. So once that comes through, um, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll be looking at going there for more uh, for more events. Yeah. At the moment, really focusing on Europe, but we'll be there soon. Okay. Great. Um, and um, I think the last thing we were just going to touch on was um, other things that people can be doing to <clears throat> sort of enhance their fertility whilst they're using this product um, yeah. i guess obviously exercise nutrition are key things that people <laughs> always um universally recommend um would you say that also perhaps charting hormones is a good a good one so that um yeah. you know you know when ti you know the timing of sex to then use the product yeah um what we see great results with charting hormones um there's there's different ways um we've worked a lot together with uh with digital uh, cycle trackers um so we actually did some working together with daisy which is a, a basal a thermometer that works well but everybody needs to also you know figure out their uh, their own way that works um so in a way i would say yes tracking your hormones is great on the other hand um you also have to watch out that stress doesn't get in the way so mm -hmm. um try to keep it spontaneous would be my recommendation depending also where you are in your cycle uh, or in your TTC journey especially um, you know in the beginning it's so easy to do things with nutrition and, and exercise and things like that 
Um, then at some point, it, it naturally evolves into using fertility trackers and trying to pinpoint that that moment. Um, but again, don't also just stick to the um, to the hormone uh, tests for uh, for ovulation tests. You know, you have these uh, dipsticks and and uh, urine tests. Some are just uh, uh, focused on kind of a natural or um, a general cycle, an average cycle. Um, yeah. So try some different things. Don't get very stuck on just those days um, yeah, and try to keep it spontaneous. Uh, that's also why we made it as comfortable to use. <laughs> so, right. yeah. Right. And especially in these days, you know, try, try to keep the exercise going and eat well. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it's, um, it, would it be useful too for same-sex couples doing um, at-home insemination? Yeah. Yeah, so we have some experience with uh, with same sex couples um, doing uh, at home um, insemination. Um, it's especially good because that's especially one of those moments where you don't want to lie there for twenty minutes. Um, so you want to get up and go about. And it's actually um, it's actually also been shown that with donor sperms, especially when it's frozen, but also when it's fresh, uh, mm-hmm. that to then keep it in the right place uh, definitely increases the chances. Um, so so yeah, it would help. Right. Great. That's been so insightful. Thank you so much for your time, Robert. Um, and anyone who's just joined, yeah, go to fertilityhelphub.com to find out a lot more about Fertilily um, and also the uh, 25% off they're doing with us and also the giveaway to 20 lucky readers. So um, has anyone else got any more questions? Otherwise, we'll probably call it a night. Don't think so. <laughs> I'm glad that we managed to make right. it work. Yeah, so, thanks, sir, for the technical issues. Uh, <laughs> Learn well, something every day. Well, thanks for answering everyone's <laughs> questions and um, more to come. Thank you, Louise. So thanks, Robert. Thank you so much. And you're doing great work with the Fertility Help. We're really thanks. happy with all the information in there. And so really, really inspiring what you guys are writing about. So thanks so much for, for that and for giving us the time of day to, uh, to talk about our product. Of course, of course. Thanks, thanks everyone for joining. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye.